Hello, I'm Jody Foster, and I am so pleased to be on the Graham Norton Show tonight. And I just hope that they don't do some, some lame Silence of the Lambs bit. from Eurovision, yay! <laughs> Looks like next year I get to go to Ukraine, yay! <laughs> Russia didn't win, no. I think Vladimir Putin was okay with that. Here he is chatting to the judges afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> and now, we have a packed trophy night, like really, really packed. Not just Jodie Foster, a host of stars of film, comedy, and music. And joining us later is Olympic diving star Tom Daly. <laughs> yes! He's here as well. Tom's preparing for the Rio Olympics. Not long now till the Olympics. The two weeks every four years where we all pretend to like cycling. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of fears that the water used for the Olympic events will be polluted. But uh, just to reassure Tom, the Olympic pool has already been tested. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> let's get some guests on. <laughs> Later, we have music from Bright Life, Bright Life, featuring Sir Elton John. It's a giant of UK comedy who's made us laugh since his breakout role as Mr. Gilbert in The Inbetweeners. Now returning in the hit series Man Down, it's the hilarious Greg Davis! <laughs> Woo! Greg, how are you? Let me get to you. Let me get to you. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a Breaking hearts in hit films from The Notebook to Drive and Crazy Stupid Love. Now he's getting rave reviews in the new 70s crime comedy, The Nice Guys. <gasps> it's Ryan Gosling! <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Come in, sit down. Ryan Gosling! Well, I'm glad I'm going to do. with Ryan in The Nice Guys as Hollywood Oscar winner has wowed us in blockbusters like Les Mis, A Beautiful Mind, Robin Hood, and Gladiator. Welcome back to the great Russell Crowe! And this double Oscar winning actor has been in the movie business for over 50 years and started films like Taxi Driver, The Accused, and Silence of the Lambs. Now she's directed George Clooney and Julia Roberts in Money Monster. Please welcome, for the first time to the show, Jodie Foster, everybody! <laughs> Welcome all, welcome all. Now, Ryan, you've never been here before. Jody's never been here before. That's right. So now, uh, Russell, have you been poisoning their minds about the show? Or? <laughs> no, I thought I'd leave the virgins to you, Graham. <laughs> Thank you, Russell. No problem. <laughs> what I like, Graham, is that uh, when Ryan sat down, he uh, undid his button. I can't actually do mine up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe able to by the end of the show. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I am <laughs> starting to sweat, Jodie. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, and Ryan and Russell, you've been all. Is it the end of your publicity tour? Oh, thank God, yeah. <laughs> you've got a couple of cities to go. Oh, you still? Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I've, I've, been right. Having, I've been having a great time on this yeah. press tour, yeah. Because Ryan attracts a lot of young women, but <laughs> well, he's in a committed relationship, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so they need a shoulder to cry on. You know. <laughs> Father figure. <laughs> I'm just glad Jody's here, honestly, because we need a little feminine energy up in this situation. Yeah. It's been my job to provide that, and I don't, you know, I've been doing my best, but the well only goes so deep. You know, <laughs> we've been through therapy, we've had, it's been a long run. <laughs> we're, uh, we're doing all right now, aren't we, pal? Can I touch you? Sorry. <laughs> He also doesn't like direct eye contact. He takes it as a sign of aggression. <laughs> uh, now, Jody and Russell, you haven't worked together, but you nearly worked together. I, I don't no, know. No, I, I asked Jody to be my date at the Golden Globes. I'd never been to the Golden Globes before, and I wanted, 
you know, I was talking to her and it came up and I said, do you want to be my date? And she very kindly said yes. So I arrive in Los Angeles to my hotel and uh, I go into the, the hotel room and it was a really fancy penthouse and it was kind of like, whoa, this is, things have changed, you know. <laughs> I walk in, I go into the bathroom and I had a big round spa tub and the entire tub was full of Foster's beer cans and ice. <laughs> It was like 120 cans or something to fill up the boat. And I just thought that was the sweetest present. Wow. That's a good gift. I didn't want him to forget me. <laughs> and Greg, you mustn't be left out because we go to glamorous things too. Don't Quite we? Only recently we were at a BBC party. <laughs> we shared that glass of wine. It was fun. <laughs> Between us. <laughs> and we met that lovely lady. Oh. <laughs> I'm surprised you're bringing that lady up. Are we allowed to bring that lady up? Well, you tell me. It's your show. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, it happened to you, not me. So you tell them. What, what, what bit of it you... OK. So, OK. So this, this lady came up to us. We were at a BBC party. She came up to the two of us. We were chatting, sharing our wine, straws. And uh, <laughs> she went, I do disability at the BBC. Whatever that means. <laughs> and then she looked at him. And what did she say to you? Well, she said that I qualify. <laughs> And it was a height thing, not the... <laughs> <laughs> what a charmer. Do you know what, Graham? <laughs> since, since we had that meeting when the lady told me that I was technically, as far as the BBC's concerned, disabled, <laughs> I've had a member of a council, I won't know where, tell me that I could get a parking badge. <laughs> The rest of the couch is so jealous right now. Yeah. Parking hey, badge. What's that? <laughs> Thanks for yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I, uh, yeah. I, won't, I won't forget the day that Ryan Gosling high-fived me because <laughs> I'm officially disabled. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you here. It's great to have you back in our lives, Jody. And and you're back directing a big crowd pleasing <laughs> thriller, uh, Money Monster. It opens next Friday, May 27th. It's a film essentially about the modern financial world and how it affects people. Yeah. Um, yes, it's about the backdrop is the financial world and uh, also the world of high speed t technology that we live in and uh, also the world of broadcast live television. It's about a young man who's lost everything, was given a tip by this uh, broadcasting guy, by this uh, presenter. And uh, he loses all of his money in one day, in nine minutes. And uh, he comes on the show and has a bomb and a gun and says, I want to tell me where my money went. And what an amazing, like, it is amazing. Julia Roberts and George Clooney. I mean, there's no messing. Yeah, amazing, the two of them. They have a real history, a real interesting dynamic together, a little bit of magic. And um, he, he's, they're, they're mostly virtually on screen together because she speaks in his ear through an earpiece, and he looks down the barrel of the, of the camera to see her in, uh, in, in the monitor. And uh, strangely, they feel closer than they ever have in any movie. Hey, listen, we've got a clip from Money Monster, uh, and this is, I was saying to you, this is such a good clip. Okay. It's uh, Julia Roberts' character, she's the producer, yes. warning uh, George Clooney that the plot to sort of end the siege right. is getting quite serious. Right. Benson, let me know when the control room is ready. This is equal one. Target is in position. Where'd everybody go? Where'd they go? Ah, oh, damn it! I knew this would happen. Do you have a clean shot? I gave you ten minutes. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look up. Look at me. There is a sniper on the catwalk at your one o'clock. Where'd they go? There is a receiver on your vest. If he shoots it out, it disables the trigger. Get out of there right now. Come on. You got a shot? Are you green or red? Green. Take the shot. That's a good kick, right? You want to see that film. That is great. Maybe they'll uh, show a clip of ours after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yours is a good clip, too. Yeah. No, you'll be yeah, pleased. Right. You'll be pleased. Two good films. How's my clip? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yours is good, too. Yeah. Yes. Three good clips. Thanks. 
<laughs> and I did the stunts in mine. <laughs> Now, in this movie, you're, you're directing people like Julia Roberts and, yes. you know, George Clooney, who's been Oscar-nominated as a director himself. Yes. Do you... Can you direct those people, or do you just go, that was excellent? Well, <laughs> uh, no, I don't think there's anybody better to work with uh, than an actor who's directed before. Um, they know what the exigencies are. They know what the problems are going to be. They want to work with the camera. They love the camera, and um, uh, they're excited to do it less times. I think the... Uh, uh, the nice thing about uh, actors that are experienced is they want to get it right so they can do it as few times as possible. Because your first scene with George Clooney was sort of... I mean, did you know, did you know him well when you were directing that first uh, scene? I didn't know him at all, no. And it was his first day of shooting, and um, he had a good attitude about it. Um, he, his first scene, uh, we're above him, and he's just sitting on a toilet. Yeah. <laughs> with his pants down, his underwear, and his ankles. And uh, he was into it. I don't really know why. But, he was. <laughs> sure. but do you direct? Did you know, George, I'm sure you have some wisdom about why he would have liked that. I have no idea. <clears throat> <laughs> but Ryan, you have you have heard of him. Yeah. And d d wasn't there a thing where he would come up and give you notes, like really serious notes? Huh. Yeah. And then he would just throw water on my crotch. <laughs> I mean, I think it was a practical joke, although it might have just been an accident. <laughs> I'm take it as a practical Did joke. Did he do it every day? What's that? Did he throw water on your crotch every day? I'm going to take a pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm talking of pranking, uh, Russell Crowe, what was the, the thing with Michael Jackson? This is such an odd story. What? Huh? Oh, he just got into the habit of um, wherever I was staying, he'd just call the hotel and ask for my room and put on funny voices. And I, I actually, I, I, yeah, I know. I, I didn't. I'd never met him, you know. But, and the thing is, the first couple of people that I said it to, I was like, I didn't want to sound like I was insane, right? Like, yeah. Michael, you know, prank called me today. You know? But when I actually started talking to people who really knew him well, they go, man, he does it all the time. You know? yeah. But it was like, yeah, it was like a thing. I used to do that when I was like 11 and 12. You know? I used to pretend I was a radio announcer and, and like give people prizes. <laughs> On the phone, <laughs> trips to Fiji and all this sort of stuff. And they would get so excited, you know. <laughs> and then I would just hang up and go, "Wow, that was a good job, well done. I made that person." <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he, who he, did Michael Jackson pretend to be? <laughs> he would uh, always start off being kind of gruff, like he was the hotel management, and there was some kind of problem. You know, I'd say that's less surprising than saying you're Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and then, then if I got kind of irritated, he'd go. It's only Michael. <laughs> That's the wrong. <laughs> and did you ever meet him? Never. <laughs> no, he, he... Are we sure it was Michael Jackson? That's what I think. Mean. I don't know. A double prank. Are you sure it wasn't George it was Clooney? Because that's the kind of thing he does. Is it? It could have been George. No, it was Michael. <laughs> uh, every time I hear, Ro I get this flashback. Every time I hear Russell speak, I, I, I once almost drowned, Graham. <laughs> uh, I was swimming, and I got swept out to sea in Cornwall, and I realised I was struggling. There was a surfer, and I called over to the surfer, and I'm really struggling here, mate. And the surfer went, oh, 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 and I realised he was drowning too. <laughs> <laughs> so in the end, I was on like a boogie board. In the end, I had to ride a wave to a cliff. <laughs> And cling onto the cliff, and it was really jagged, and I really cut my hands. And I sort of climbed onto the cliff, and thought, oh my god, and the waves were, it was awful. And then I saw this lifeguard coming out on, um, like a canoe. He was really powerful, and he turned out to be Australian. And I thought, oh, thank God, and there was literally blood. And I thought, thank God, I'm saved. I'm saved. And he came right up to me, and turned around, and he went, oi, mate, stop fucking around. <laughs> Was it? Was it? Could have been him. That's something you would say. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely something I would say. <laughs> oh. uh, now, the nice guys. The nice guys. It's a really funny, really funny kind of a crime comedy set in the seventies. It opens here on the third of June. So, uh, Russell Ryan, tell us uh, who are you in it? What happens? You're so good at this. I'm making you answer the questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard following that. Uh, money monster. But, uh, you know, our film is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a detective film in the 70s. It's um, got, we got a lot going on. We got, yeah. we, got, we got mermaids, we got talking bees. You know, you don't got that. <laughs> we 
Richard Nixon show. makes a cameo. I thought you said I was going to tell the story. Sorry. That's all. I'm just that. yeah. Come on I mean, now, you were best you're very couple. very clear about me telling the story. Your best then... couple, your best couple. <laughs> I've learned a lot from Russell. You know, he's taught me to ignore all my instincts, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's Shane Black, so, you know, I grew up on Shane's movies, uh, Monster Squad being the first movie I probably ever quoted. And then, you know, Joel Silver produced it, and so it's all of these, uh, you know, like, all the lethal weapons, and, uh, and uh, Xanadu, too, so, legend. And in these, you know, in a kind of in a buddy movie, yeah. like, how, did, were you friends before this film? We'd, we'd met. <laughs> we had a conversation. <laughs> I was in this sort of, uh, you know, I'd, I'd seen a, a few of his movies in a row, and I and I thought, uh, I thought he was something special, so I called him up about the project, you know, and uh, I kind of said, look, you know, can we uh, maybe meet, have some dinner, me and the wife, and you and you go, and you know, just an intimate little thing, and, and he said, yeah, cool, we set a time and a date, so I, I told the ex-wife, you know, that's what we're going to do on this date, you know. And she didn't really say that much, you know. We came right, come around to the day, you know, I'm saying, I'll remind you, like, 8 o'clock tonight, we're having dinner with Ryan Ava, you know. And she goes, yeah, 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 because I've, I've invited this, this, and she started listing all her girlfriends that she'd invited. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, and her mum. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you know, this is supposed to be this small little intimate thing. She goes, oh, he won't mind. It's like, you've got, like, a dozen girlfriends and your mother coming. <laughs> it's like, he's going to notice. <laughs> So I, I start, like, trying to even the table up, and I'm getting on the phone and I'm calling all these blokes. So, you know, by the time he arrives for an intimate dinner for four, there's 30 people there. <laughs> but I couldn't tell him. I couldn't just, you know, because you've got to, you know, be loyal to your <laughs> spouse, you know. Now that I'm separated, I can just tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was a bit of a strange uh, first meeting. Hey, listen, we've got uh, a clip from The Nice Guys. Uh, it's good. It's a good clip. It is a good clip. Uh, this is Russell's character essentially trying to build bridges with Ryan's character. March, Jack Ely. Don't get upset. I'm not here to hurt you. I just want to ask you a question. Hey, sit down. How stupid do you think I am? Ever since your little visit the other day, this little baby's going to stay right here. Who looks better on the toilet, George or <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. We're going to have to... I... People will have to go and see both films yes, and decide. Yes, they will. Yeah. When you were making this, this movie, what, where, where did the dog... The dog isn't in the film. The, what dog? Uh, you had a dog, didn't you? Oh, no, I found a dog on the, uh, on the film. Okay. Would you like me to tell that story? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I can give it a go if you want. <laughs> no, big old dog it was, man. Big old dog. <laughs> Three legs. <laughs> Dang it. Right? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, uh, so I, I was staying at this sort of go-to movie guy house in Atlanta where, you know, when they showed me the, the house, they were like, you know, Liam Hemsworth and... Miley Cyrus just stayed here, so... Mm -hmm. And they gave me one of these, you know? <laughs> which I thought was untoward. And, and, uh, but it was, they were very precious about the house. What I didn't realize was that there's a strict no-dogs policy, and then I was going to work one morning, and there's a little dog, it's minus... It's below zero, and I thought, oh, what, can it, what harm can it do? And I let it in the house. When I came back um, from work, it was like a fecal Jackson Pollock. It, just, <laughs> <laughs> it was just... It was everywhere. You know what I mean? It was like, did he have help? <laughs> I was, I was like, like looking up, like, did he get a ladder? <laughs> how, did he, how, does he, how is he still alive? You know? <laughs> and uh, so then I had to clean it all up, and then I had to hide the dog, and I spent like two weeks hiding this dog. And, uh, you know, when it was over the last day, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And actually, your driver, Bo, mm -hmm. said that his... Um, his father had just lost his dog of 16 years, and so Bo took this little dog, and he went and lived on a lake with 100 acres, and he went to, you know, literally dog. Oh. Oh. So that's a nice story. That's a so lovely story. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 
It's a euphemistic for killing That's what they yeah. told <laughs> That's what they told living in 100 about. acres now <laughs> with Bo's dad. <laughs> so dead, that dog. <laughs> <laughs> He died after the shit incident, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> End of dog story. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, on a movie like this, the, you're spending all this time together, you have to get on, you are buddies, but on Silence of the Lambs, is it true that... The, did you never speak to Anthony Hopkins? No. Never spoke to him. Uh, he was scary. I mean, the first day we had a reading, we had, like, a little read-through, and we... I got there early, and then I went to the bathroom, and I came back, everybody was sitting down, we did the read-through of the, of the film, and by the end of it, I never wanted to talk to him again. I was <laughs> petrified. Um, and so then we did the whole movie. He was always behind those, the glass partitions, or he was in his cell. And because the scenes were so long, they'd kind of lock him in at the beginning of the day. And he'd go there. And then the next day, he'd be on the other side, and I'd be, uh, and I'd be on this side. And we got to the end of the movie, and it really had never had a conversation. But like, you never passed backstage in a car. No, I avoided him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I really avoided him. And then uh, I was eating a tuna fish sandwich. It was the last day, and he came up to me, and he, I guess he was sidled up to me, and I said, I, I don't know, I sort of had a tear in my eye. I was like, I'm, I was really scared of you. And he said, I was scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny, because why would anyone be scared of me? I don't so, know. So when you were filming the, the yeah. scene, you know, I'm, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do that again? <laughs> <laughs> when you were filming the scenes yes. when he was behind the partition, well, they were reset cameras. You just sat there. Well, yeah, because they were. He was screwed in. You couldn't. I couldn't get to him. He was behind the glass. Did he stare at you? Um, <laughs> sometimes he did. <laughs> I don't have an Anthony Hopkins story, but I would like to take the opportunity. I taught a child called Gary Hopkins, who was. <laughs> a child. And I'd very much like to take the opportunity to say uh, he was a prick. <laughs> Russell Crowe, I've heard about how you like challenges and stuff, and one of the shows that Greg's doing is a new series of Taskmaster. It's on Dave. Yeah. And, and it is that sort of thing. You set challenges for kind of celebrities and comedians. Yeah. But they're quite... They're kind of bonkers, the They're challenges. ridiculous, yeah. Well, they have to collect as, much, as many tears in an egg cup as they can in a minute. <laughs> uh, they had to buy me the best present they could, and uh, one of them had my name tattooed on his foot. <laughs> Josh Ridicum, you know, Josh Ridicum. You're kidding. Yeah. Who can hide a pineapple on their person? <laughs> <laughs> and I think my, my favourite from the upcoming series is Who Can Impress a Mayor? They were just put in a room with a local mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and to impress him. A mayor? Yeah. A mayor? A mayor. Yeah. A mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Not a horse. Not a horse. Because yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that would be stupid. <laughs> 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 And I've got to mention a new series of Man Down. Please, Man please. Down is coming up on Channel 4 in July. Yeah. And are you still living with your mother in it? I am, sadly, yes. <laughs> and, no, and tragically, Tragic. this is based on your life. I mean, this is things... Yeah, but... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Loosely, Graham. No, but things like, isn't the washing machine, that happened to you. What? The, the washing. <laughs> you were very hungover. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell Tony Foster that story. <laughs> <laughs> All their stories are really cool, though, Graham. When I was teaching, <laughs> which is what this show is based on, I, I went home one weekend, and I was in my 30s. I was probably 33 years of age. I went home to see my uh, mother, and then I went back. And while I was at home, my mother did my washing for me, because I was only 33. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went back, and on the, on the Sunday night, I got really drunk. Uh, and then I, I went for a curry, and then the next day I went into school. <laughs> I'm going to. I went into school, and it was a school in Slough, and it was a, quite a rough school, but they had a really brilliant hearing-impaired department, so there were he hearing-impaired kids who, uh, you know, struggled. Mm. They, were, they were really looked after in the school. Anyway, I was really hungover. I went there, and about break time, I felt really uncomfortable. I thought, something's not right, you know? <laughs> so I went to the toilet, and I pulled my trousers down, and uh, uh, some of my mother's knickers had got... <laughs> I got mixed up in the wash she'd done. And I was wearing my mother's underwear. <laughs> and I 
I went, oh, God, oh, no. Oh, I remember going, oh, you loser, this is, this is such a low point, you fucking loser. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then... The curry and the booze... <laughs> the curry and the booze kicked in from the night before. <laughs> so I... I, ha I did, like, a faecal Jackson Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> and I started, I started going, oh, God, not this, not this as well. Oh, Jesus. So I cleaned myself up and I pulled my mother's pants back up. <laughs> and I went back into the um, classroom and I saw one of the hearing impaired kids just looking at me like this. <laughs> and that's when I remembered that my, I had a microphone directly... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so maybe Mandan isn't that far fetched. Right? <laughs> uh, listen, we've got a clip. We've got a clip of you. Uh, this, this is Greg uh, as the teacher trying to break into your own school. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar genres. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, you, we must chat about how uh, <laughs> we achieved that drama. Uh, right, it is time to meet my next guest. Mmm, chlorine, is that what I smell? This diver was one of Britain's <laughs> youngest ever Olympic medalists. He took London 2012 by storm and is now preparing for the Games in Rio. Here he is showing us how he won a gold medal at last week's European Championships. Perch down there. There's your fizzy drink. Thank Very you. good. That was amazing. Thank that you. That is amazing. Now, congratulations. Uh, gold medal. Yes. Uh, and do, gold medal, and do you get silvers as well? Yeah, I got two golds and a silver. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. and, now, Rio is this summer, so are you deep in training now? Yeah, so after the European Championships um, last weekend, I've had a couple of days off, and then, yeah, it's back to training six hours a day, six days a week, and then it's the Olympic Games. It's kind of terrifying because, you know, you get that training moment for four years, you have to train for that one moment. And it doesn't matter if you're European champion, world champion, Olympic champion from before, in that one moment on that particular day, you have six dives, and if you mess one of them up, then it's over. So it's, uh, it's a pretty cutthroat kind of And do people just thing. deliver your food in little Tupperware boxes and things? And... <laughs> what, I'll take it to the competition like a pack No, lunch. no, but like in the training, <laughs> in the training, is it kind of like, OK, you can eat this now, Stop eating now. Uh, you kind of get into a routine of what you're used to eating and what you wake up. And yeah, I know I, have, I like have a routine where I get up and have my breakfast and then go to training, then eat a bit more, then train some more, then eat a bit more, then sleep. And that's basically what I do every single day. When, when do you put on the, the speedos? Hmm? When do you put on the speedos? Hold on, I basically live in them. Oh, do you? Yeah, mate, yeah like, 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 quite often you get. Jody's on it. Jody's on it because no. I, I want to know. <laughs> well, no, because we've got a picture that Stella McCartney has designed the speedos. Now, sadly, she ran out of material, money, and interest. <laughs> So, <laughs> those are the speedos. Now, they sent us a pair of the speedos, and they really are quite small. Those are the ones I was wearing yesterday. Mm. Um, <laughs> how lovely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're still damp. <laughs> um, but, like, they are.
are very small, Tom. Well, everything has to stay in place. Obviously. You know, if, you're, if you're spinning around, the last thing you want to do is ha have something come out of its place where it's meant to be. And also, when you hit the water, you don't want things, you know, flapping about at some places. <laughs> because, I mean, it would hurt. So the, so the yes. closer you can keep it all in, the, the better, really. Yes. You're going to ask me to put those on, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It would look like a very ill elephant. But what I would... What, I don't want to be indelicate, but what oh, if yeah. anything changes and you're wearing those? Oh. I mean, when you're stood on the end of a... Have you ever stood on the end of a 10-metre platform? Of course I haven't. OK. <laughs> so that, that's probably the last thing that will go through your head, is but to what, have anything change. What about when they're giving there? you the medal and you're thinking, look at me? <laughs> They're leaning in and going, oh, sorry. <laughs> you wear a little bit more on the podium, you actually have like a full on tracksuit that you oh, wear. Oh, that's thoughtful. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why they wear the tracksuit? The yeah. What? I don't think that's why they give them tracksuits. <laughs> in case they get a boner on them. <laughs> to avoid embarrassment. Um, I have to tell you, yes. on this couch, there is someone who has won medals for swimming. I, I could probably guess who that is. Go guess. The tallest man on the sofa. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a swimmer's physique. That no, no, is fine. That's, that's why you never trust swimmer's body on a person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you really win medals? Yes, I did, and I'm rather insulted you taking that time. <laughs> I swam for the county, yes. Did you really? And I don't mind telling you, I cut through the water like an orca these days. <laughs> And now, Ryan, you are a sports fan, or you know you're not a sports fan. Cricket, no, you like? No, I'll no. pick up on this one. Ryan comes from Canada. Yes. <laughs> In Canada, the national sport is ice hockey. And Ryan is a Canadian who doesn't focus on ice hockey. And they have a descriptive <laughs> phrase for that, north of the American border there. Uh, in Canada, if you're a Canadian who doesn't focus on ice hockey, you're called an asshole. <laughs> See? That's the magic. <laughs> <laughs> right there, right in the crosshairs. But then, but then, why, if you don't do sports, why were you having the... Was it a deep tissue massage you were having? Where are you going with this, Gwen? <laughs> were you, yeah, having, were you having a Turkish massage or something? I don't know what it has to do with what we're talking about. But... <laughs> it's a funny story, tell it. <laughs> <clears throat> I had an awful experience having a Turkish massage <laughs> where... <laughs> This guy's idea of massage was to, like, take my le one leg and, and the other arm and try and connect it <laughs> behind my back. And I was kind of like, you know, like that. And then I... Well, his belly went in my mouth. Oh! <laughs> it was like a little Borat moment. And you know when you get something weird in your mouth and you're like, if you're eating something, you go like, you send your, your brain sends your tongue to figure out what it is? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a conscious thought. It's just like, is that a bone? Figure that out. My <laughs> tongue goes in to figure it out. My tongue was like, what is that? <laughs> it's a hairy belly. <laughs> sounds like you're heading off a newspaper. <laughs> uh, listen, Tom, good luck in Rio. Thank we you wish you all much. the best. Tom Daly, everybody. Music. I am a huge fan of this performer. Tonight he is making his TV debut alongside a very special friend and mentor. Performing the single All in the Name, please welcome Bright Light, Bright Light and Sir Elton John! <laughs> to the 
Bright light, but you, we can call you Rod now that you're. You can, yes. Okay, <laughs> good. So, uh, how did this happen? How do you become, you know, how, how do you meet? I, I got in a management company, managed Ed Sheeran and various people like that. And Rod was signed to us initially, but he was a singer songwriter with a guitar, and it didn't quite fit, and he wanted to leave and, you know, f find his own way of doing stuff. And he left and became a kind of electronic singer songwriter, and we remained friends. And he does everything on his own. He makes his own records. He gets his own, uh, you know, gets them printed. He gets them pressed. He does, he's a one-man machine. And uh, this is uh, Choreography is the album. Yes. And uh, you could pre-order it now. People love to do that. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Just in case all the MP3s run out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a rush on! And uh, July the 15th, it's actually yeah, good. Yeah, it comes out July 15th. And the song that we just sang is out today. And you get it free when you pre-order that on iTunes or your favourite. You're good at this. Very good. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, but no, it's a great sound. And uh, people can see you. You are performing live around the country. Yeah. Um, I'm doing some little preview shows in May and then I've got a UK tour in July. OK, now, Elton, every time you come on the show, you always say, oh, I'm winding down, I'm cutting back. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're starting a tour on the 26th of May, <laughs> <laughs> which ends February 2017. <laughs> <laughs> like, is this well, no, I have, I have seven months, seven weeks off in the summer. <laughs> yeah, but, um... <laughs> but is this a... I know you're not calling it a farewell tour, but if people want to see you, should they go see this tour? No, not necessarily. Um, <laughs> no, no, encourage them. <laughs> encourage them. <laughs> yeah, fuck you all. Don't come see it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, by 2017, won't both the kids be in school and then it'll all be kind of, you know, your, li your life will be more limited? Yeah, um, but I just like playing and uh, I'm a working musician and I love to do it. I like it more than I've ever done. And if you're still feeling... Uh, fresh and energetic, then do it while you can. Um, I'm not going to be doing it forever. I can tell you that because I want to see my boys grow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I love about having you on the show is you have you have you on the couch with people like this. And before you came on, everyone was going, "Oh, we're on with Sylvester John." You're like you, you're like a fan of Sylvester yeah. John, and yeah. Oh yeah, I I I I was you for Halloween. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish we had a picture of that. Here's the other thing, though, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from the music and that, all these many records and songs that remain with you and in your heart, one of the kindest men on the planet. I agree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Listen, thank you very much for, for coming in to see us, but uh, we now come to uh, Russell's favourite part of the show. Uh, Are you going to let me do oh, it I love Yeah, you can sit there if you want to. OK, come on, sit down. Yeah, it's got to be destruction in there. <laughs> I, I, I pity... Are we like I, here, or should I move oh, you, it? Well, move it a little bit. Yeah, should, yeah there you go. OK. Oh, 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 yeah, that's good. Wow. <laughs> you might want to drape some Speedos on it. There you go. <laughs> 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 It is time to visit the big red chair. Here we go. Here we go. Who's up first? I pity these people. Hello. Hey. Hi. What's your name? George. George. And where do you live, George? Well, I live in London. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's travelled not far to see us. <laughs> what do you do, George? I work for a visual effects company. For what? A visual effects company. Oh, visual so effects 2D company. C uh, 3D CGI. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good for you. You are clinging on for dear life. Well done, George. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go with your story. So, we recently finished work on the nice guys <gasps> and it was late one night fancied a beer went downstairs <laughs> <and> grabbed <laughs> <a beer. laughs> yeah. I didn't like what I was going. <laughs> okay let's go for another one hello hello hi. hi what's your name I'm Gemma Gemma lovely and where are you from Gemma I'm from Wimbledon Wimbledon <laughs> Way! they love you and, uh, do you have a job Gemma uh, yeah I do I'm a project manager for a renewable energy company? Well, I'm no wiser. Uh, uh, <laughs> off you go with your story. OK, so I was on a third date with this guy. It was going quite well. Um, we had been out for a nice dinner, and then we went back to his place. Um, we had a few drinks, and we got onto the topic of what our favourite movie moments were. Um, mine, naturally, was the uh, moment from Crazy Stupid Love with Ryan and Emma Stone, and Ryan has his top off. <laughs> uh, and they do the I'm famous move the from Dirty Dancing, and he suggested that we gave it a go. <laughs> um, so I agreed to it and um, launched myself at him. <laughs> um, we then collapsed in a heap, and he knocked his head and suffered from concussion for two days. <laughs> um, there was no... Oh, oh. <laughs> In the red chair, you can contact us via our website at this very address. Uh, that is it for tonight. Please, a huge thank you to my guests tonight. Bright light, bright light! <laughs> Sir Elton John! Greg Davies! Ryan Gosling! Tony Foster! Tom Daly! Russell Crowe! Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. Join me next week with music from Kareen Bailey Ray, actors Kate Beckinsale and Dominic Cooper, Game of Thrones star Amelia Clark, and the new face of Top Gear, Matt LeBlanc. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>And you can see Greg Davis in Cuckoo. The box set is available now at the BBC Three website. And another BBC Three comedy comes to BBC One next tonight with Witless. While on the BBC Asian Network website, an incredible night of music at Asian Network Live.